Hey people, welcome to Accidental Gods, to the podcast where we believe that another world is still possible and that together we can make it happen. And this is the mini bonus episode of the podcast where I tell you about the one thing that I think we need now above all else to help us create that better, more flourishing future that our hearts know is possible. I have talked about it a little before, but this is the detail. And this is Thrutopia. If we were a different kind of podcast, we would have a flourish of trumpets just now. But I don't have trumpets, I have a chime, which I tend to think is friendlier on your ears. So, here we go. Ta-da! Thrutopia. I will give you the baseline details first and then I want to explain why I think this is so important. So it's going to start on Sunday, May the 1st and run through until Sunday, October 16th. It's running from six o'clock till nine o'clock in the evening, UK time, which is British summer time for the duration of the course. It's online, so you can log in from anywhere in the world where that time frame works for you. We will hold the meetings on Zoom, unless something magically better turns up between now and then. And we'll also be creating an online meeting space on the website. It'll be up by the start of the course so that we can continue the conversations and develop a community over the duration of the course. And the website is throughtopia.life. And that's through spelt T-H-R-U-T-O-P-I-A, the short version of through. The word comes from the philosopher and activist Rupert Reed's 2017 paper in Huffington Post, and Rupert will be one of our speakers. But before I go into the granular detail, I want to explain why I think this is the single most important thing we can be doing, why it is so important that Faith and I have spent the better part of the last six months getting this ready and will spend the next year, hopefully, making it happen with you. So we are a storied species. One of the things that sets humanity apart, as far as we know, is our capacity, actually our hardwired need to create stories. Whenever we start a new job or move house or start a new creative project or take the huge risk of embarking on a new relationship with a person or a puppy or anything, We are building futures in our mind that we want to move towards. And those futures often don't end up exactly as we imagined, but that doesn't matter. It's the prospect of things that we want that draw us forward, that lead us each step of the way. We know what we want, and we have a pretty good idea of how to get there. But in our larger world, now, we are teetering on the edge of a climate and ecological and social emergency, and we don't have any visions of the futures we want. We have a whole load of dystopias. We know exactly how bad things could be. We have a sprinkling of utopias, but they're always really distant. Some other time, some other place, often on another planet or in another realm of reality. They're not accessible from here. And so what we need is a set of roadmaps to futures we want, really clear guidance of how to get from here to there, where there is somewhere that all of us would want to be. This is what Rupert Reid describes as Thrutopias, the visions and the roadmaps of what Rob Hopkins so often says is somewhere we would be proud to leave to the future generations. Futures where they look back and say, Yep, it was hard. And yes, they made some mistakes. But my goodness, those who went before us had the visions and they gave everything they had to making them come true and we are building on the foundations they laid and it's okay. And it's hard to imagine that. We need to lay those foundations and we need to do it first in stories, all kinds of stories. We need Netflix blockbusters binge-watched TV series, soap operas, theatre plays, novels, 
poetries, songs, blogs, letters to the local newspaper and the parish post. I don't care what we're writing, but we need to get to the point where even the characters in the soap operas are discussing the ways forward to a flourishing future as if this is what ordinary people do, because it is what ordinary people are doing. And we don't have that yet. COP26 taught us quite a lot of things, but one of the most clear to me was that the people at the top, the people currently making the decisions about the trajectory of our species, have no vision at all of how the world could be that isn't business as usual with a bit less carbon in the atmosphere. And that's not good enough. It never was. But just now, it's becoming an emergency that they have something different, something that is so pervasive in everything that they watch and see and hear that it's obvious how we can move forward. And so those of us who are in any kind of creative endeavour can begin to do that. I am writing a Thrutopian novel as we speak, and the past eight months of work have taught me two things. First is, it's not easy to step out of the known into the almost, but not quite, unknown. If I had not been hosting this podcast for the past two years, I would have no clue of what's happening out there in the world already, just now, around us, that is leading us forward, of how everything stitches together, of how the systems each come together into one great, big, complex, systemic whole, of how to shift our economic, political, power generation, food and farming, business and work, cities, all of those systems, how to shift those in ways that are incremental from where we are to something that is plausible. So that's the first thing that I have realised. And the second is, it needs more than me. We need dozens, hundreds, thousands of writers in every possible form, creating your own visions of that more flourishing future, that the generations that come after us will look back and say, heck yes, they did it. We need all of you. And we don't have long. The clock is ticking. The sixth mass extinction is accelerating. And so, what we need, I think, is a hybrid between a think tank that's working out the possible futures and a writing masterclass, which lets us work out the fictions that we're going to create that people will believe. And so the Thrutopia Masterclass is designed to be exactly this. It's a three-way thing, an ideas generator, a narrative incubator, and a dissemination guide, because I think we need all three of these to get us forward. So if you're already inspired, then the website is thrutopia.life. That's thrutopia, T-H-R-U, topia, the short version, dot life. Head off. It's all there. If you want more, then. The ideas generator is the think tank. On the basis that if we're going to write lots of different fictions, we need the data. We are writers. We need to do the research. We need to know what's possible and how it works, how things interact with each other, how people engage with them, how differently we could begin to make our politics, to create our democracy, to make decisions with the technologies that we've got. All of those big, big ideas, we need to know what they are so that we can write the clear route through. So what we've done is we've brought together 13 speakers, one every alternate Sunday evening, UK time, from the 1st of May to October the 16th. And their remit is to outline their vision of how the world could be in the 2030s if we make good choices now and what those good choices are. So we're going to kick off with Rob Hopkins, the co-founder of the Transition Town Network and host of the amazing podcast called From What If to What Next. Rob really gets it. His podcast is an iteration of this idea. We'll have Cory Doctorow, Phoebe Tickell, Indra Adnan, Howard Johns, Tamsin Omond, Lots of others, each with a specialist area, but also able to look at the bigger picture and stitch things together. Each speaker will be with us for an hour. They have up to half an hour to put forward their vision of the future. And then the rest of the time, 
to take questions from the Zoom room. And some of them want to just start off with questions. Reiki Corden said, get them asking me questions straight away and I will shape my answers to what you need to know. So it's going to be flexible within that hour. Then the speaker can go away if they want. Some of them won't stay. And then we'll have a short break because an hour on Zoom is enough. And then we get into the narrative incubator, which is the 90-minute masterclass where we can begin to explore what the different visions we've been offered have brought up for us, where we can look at our own framing, our own resilience, the things where we're triggered, the things where we go, yes, but what, why, in a safe space, the place where we can create small cameos and small breakout groups of possible futures and stress test them in a safe environment where I can go, hey guys, I just heard Rob or Tanzin or Indra or Raiki or whoever say this, and that fits together with this other stuff that we've all heard or or that I bring in from the outside. And if I stitch that together and I try and make a future that looks like this, is that going to work, do you think? And we can have feedback from other people who understand the creative process and want to engage with it. We'll do a whole bunch of, I have ideas for lots of other ways that we can push ourselves to the edges of our own understanding because no problem is solved from the mindset that created it. And we are in the middle of the problem. And our job as creatives is to create the edges of the mindset for other people in ways that don't trigger them, that don't switch them off. Don't Look Up was a fascinating movie and it is the most downloaded thing on Netflix. But it's speaking to people who already got the problem and it is turning off the ones who already think the problem is not a real problem. And we can't keep going on like that. We have to find the ways to speak across the many, many divides that are being created in our body politic and our social structures. So the 90-minute masterclass is ways of us stretching ourselves and stretching our ideas with each other. It also means that we can begin to narrow down. So if you're someone who really wants to Look at the granular detail of how a holistically functioning internet and social media landscape might look and feel and work. You can gather together a bunch of other creative people and set up a small subgroup in the Circle app on the website and talk about it. And yes, I will be one of those people. So that's broadly the masterclass. There's lots more to it than that, but it'll evolve as we go through. The final part, the third part, is the dissemination guide, because it's no good if we write the best scripts and novels and stage plays and poems and nobody else ever gets to see them. So we've invited some key industry professionals from publishing, from theatre, from film and television to come and talk to us about how they see their industry from the inside and to answer our questions about how best to get our work in front of the most people or the people who will get it and be able to work with it best. Because that's what this is about now, creating the futures that will work and inspire the most people. We don't have time not to do that. And finally, also early on, as an adjunct to this, we're going to bring in Dr. Sharon Blackie, the mythologist, to talk about the heroic journey and what a post-heroic journey might look like or whether we are all just so hardwired on the need to be the heroes in our own story that we need to evolve the heroic journey to fit the current moment. Because whatever we do, we are breaking conventions and we need to do it with our eyes open so that we can lead our readers, our viewers, our listeners through to whatever comes next. So this is it. Through Tobia Masterclass, a six-month intensive course building visions of the future. And it's for anyone who is a creative writer in any form. This is not about having been published before or having had a screenplay made or anything like that. If you want to come along and you have been published and you have multiple television series on, you are more than welcome with open arms. But I don't want anyone listening to think that just because you haven't been published yet, that you can't come. If you want to devise the futures that we would be proud to bequeath to those who follow us, I want you to be part of the conversations that make it happen. 
you could be the one that writes the next book, that gets turned into the next movie, that makes the difference. So please, come along. My aim for this is that we end up with a cohort of people who have the ideas and the internal resilience and the tools to write the most amazing, outstanding, inspiring work that will engage people right across all of the really quite grim political divides that currently separate us until we have a momentum for generative, regenerative change that becomes unstoppable. And if you want to help write that, I really want you to be there. What it's not, and we need to be really clear about this, is a beginner's writing course. We're not going to teach you how to write a bestseller, if that's even something that can be taught, which I doubt, or screenplay or poem or whatever. There are loads of places out there where you can learn the basics of how to write. This is the other bit, the working out what to write and how to structure a plausible future. So I hope that's really clear. But that doesn't mean if you're a beginner you can't come. It's just that you'll be given other tools than you would get on a beginner's basic writing course. So that's it. The website is throughtopia.life. I will link it in the show notes, but if you want to look it up, that's T-H-R-U-T-O-P-I-A dot life. And if this sounds good to you and you're inspired and you want to join us, please do check it out. And if you know of anybody else who would be equally inspired, then please do send them this link. And that is it for now. We will be back to the normal rhythm next week and look forward to meeting you on the 1st of May for the first of our Spark sessions. But in the meantime, thank you for listening this far. Take good care and goodbye.